Our next presenter is Jane Elder. Jane is the Executive Director of the Wisconsin Academy of Sciences, Arts, and Letters. She has a strong background in public policy leadership, nonprofit management, and involvement in Wisconsin arts. Her career is focused on environmental policy and communications. The Wisconsin Academy led the development of Climate Forward, a new roadmap for Wisconsin's climate and energy future, which includes an ambitious plan to aggressively increase renewable energy by 2050. It showcases Wisconsin companies who are making bold advancements, and in direct contrast to Matt's recommendation that we don't talk about climate change. Jane is going to talk about renewable energy and how it can help us uh, meet climate reduction goals. So welcome Jane, please.
address Wisconsin's contribution. And of course, we start with the energy portfolio and how we, um, how we are uh, introducing carbon to the environment. So these are things to already know about. We are heavily dependent on coal. Uh, while we are using a lot of natural gas, it was never a strategically uh, intentional bridge fuel. It just got cheap. Right? And that's why Wisconsin is embracing natural gas so much, and so much of the country as well. It was not a strategic choice to reduce emissions. Uh, there's only one remaining nuclear plant in Wisconsin, and regardless of how you feel about nuclear energy, the energy that used to be produced um, by the Kiwani plant is now being produced by fossil fuel. And we had opportunities to do other things, but that's the challenge there. Uh, most of you know the statistics about our energy sources, and uh, only 5.4% of our total Wisconsin energy comes from renewables. And for the electricity, half of that comes from outside of Wisconsin. So we are not a national leader in this space at all. And the amount of money we send out of state is all you mentioned today in terms of what we spend uh, to bring fuel into the state and energy. So we're not in a great position. Uh, we've also talked about some of the negative results from business as usual. Our electrical rates uh, have potentially become among the most expensive in the region. We will certainly be vulnerable to any eventual price set on carbon, and we're not positioning our, ourselves to have any resilience around that whatsoever. Um, renewable en energy development and jobs will go to other states, and we have evidence that that's already happening. Um, and we also know that other states will then gain competitive edges in these fields and in these industries and in these energy systems, none of which feels very forward. So. <laughs> So our, our steering committee looked at what were the practical ways we can go forward, and these again will probably feel familiar to most of you. So we looked at five pathways to progress. Efficiency and conservation, renewable energy, smarter transportation systems, natural carbon storage, and what we're going to call 21st century innovations, or the business practices and business models that can lead us into a new era of how we do things with and for and around energy. One of the exciting things about this project was that we identified uh, many, many Wisconsin communities, corporations, farms, families, individuals, entrepreneurs who are already moving forward. And we want to showcase some of those here today. So I'm going to go through each of these pathways very quickly. Uh, we wanted to, you know, conservation efficiency, we know they're some of the biggest gains there, but they're also incremental. Uh, but there's huge opportunities in retrofit and design. And we are recommending that we Wisconsin strive for a 2% increase in emissions in every year. Uh, our conservation <coughs> leaders, West Cap, which is a community action uh, group in Northwest Wisconsin, for building retrofits, Johnson Controls, Quad Graphics, they got two mentions here because of the editing, uh, New and House Kit Homes, <laughs> Miller Cores, and there's many, many more. And I want to just stress we had uh, our files have many more case studies, and um, it's just the document was getting very large, and we we're trying to keep our distribution around the state. Renewable, we've already talked a lot about here, here are the big opportunities. Embracing solar, Wisconsin can embrace solar. Um, there's now already competitive prices for homes and buildings. Um, smart biomass, we've talked about that. Where, uh, and by smart, we mean digesters and co-generation close to the sources. We have a lot of sources, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to ship a bunch of wood waste from northern Wisconsin down to an urban center here and then deal with the transportation costs. So looking at smart ways to use our biomass resources. And strategic wind, while we may not have the world's best wind, we still have a lot of decent wind and not some pretty good wind. And the question is, where is it? What's the strategic use? And how can it be best be applied and developed in Wisconsin? And through site-specific strategies, I think it's really well. And here we're su suggesting striving for a minimum of a 1 to 1.5% 1 .1 increase in renewable generation annually. Some of our renewable <coughs> leaders, say the Walkers, the Monomas, Essie Johnson, Smart transportation, Wisconsin is not known as a national leader in transportation strategies. Um, that being said, um, there are plenty of things that we can do in emission standards, in our fuels, our logistical and planning work, reducing congestion, smart freight and marine systems, and diversifying on transportation choices. Um, we did single out here Quick Trip and the work that it's doing on alternative fuels for its fleet, Schneider for its work on logistics and uh, its, its trucking systems, and the City of Madison for its bike paths and bus system. Natural carbon storage doesn't get a lot of conversation. People talk about sequestration and they think about the massive engineering projects next to coal plants. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the fact that plants and soil have been naturally sequestering 
uh, carbon since photosynthesis evolved. And so Wisconsin's a state with a lot of land, a lot of healthy soil, and soils and forests that could be much healthier. Uh, and so whether you're using perennial grasses uh, in, in both dairy and beef, these two farmers focused here are, or whether you're raising um, orchard crops, alfalfa, perennial uh, crops, allow us to keep a lot of the carbon in the soil. And a healthily managed forest also keeps a lot of carbon in the soil and in the system and allows nature to do a very good job of storage and there's a real potential for some exciting breakthroughs in soil carbon storage. Uh, and a lot of that research has been done in Wisconsin, so we think it's a huge opportunity for an agricultural state. We looked across our case studies of what the game-changing attributes were, and just quickly, uh, and these won't be surprising to you, but that uh, in many cases, there was leadership from the top, that the CEO or the board of directors, somebody said, we are going to do this. Uh, teamwork here is a shorthand. Um, really, it's a culture of learning and innovation. When we found organizations and businesses and communities that were excited about learning and innovation and becoming on the leading edge, that spread throughout the organizational culture. So organizational culture was important. Baselines and metrics, measuring whether or not they were making progress, co-conservation across products and processes, um, the important role that public-private partnerships played in a lot of these getting on the ground, and then whether or not these organizations were willing to tell their stories. We found in the business community, some people were very proprietary, and they weren't used to cheer getting you know, cheerleaders about their processes because they thought that was an internal secret. And somehow we have to be able to give people the confidence to, to claim their victories on this area. We singled out three what we call leaders in the vanguard of big change. One of them was the medicine health system. I don't need to explain why after your presentation. Uh, Organic Valley, from the, the farmer to the consumer, a whole system strategy. And the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District, which is one of the national leaders in co-conservation between water and energy, and has shifted its overall strategy for water management from the end of the pipe to the head of the watershed. And that notion of whole system thinking and looking at the relationship between co-efficiencies and co-generation and the relationship between water and uh, energy, uh, fantastic. So Wisconsin needs to have this conversation. We're hoping that the climate report is one way we can help have that conversation go forward. Uh, and these are questions that I'm sure came up in the rate cases, and if they didn't, they should have. What kind of Wisconsin do we want to live in? How do we want to better use our capacities in the state? Manufacturing, research, scientific, agricultural leadership. We have all these capacities. Can we tap them in this space? And one of our challenges, the Vanguard exit. And they're listed on your sponsorship list here and our, our list here. How do we help spread the word? We set the audacious goal, which is simply mirroring what the International Panel on Climate Change and the European Union have said, as that we should strive in Wisconsin for an 80% reduction of Wisconsin emitted fossil fuels by 2050. And some of the bullet points I've already talked about here. Um, and, and we can only do this if we engage in a new kind of sustainable business practice and new kind of models for utility systems and structures and be informed, educate, and engage the public. Um, we produce Climate Forward in the summer. You can get it off our website, or uh, if you want a uh, print copy, we can also let you order it for $30, but they're free, and we have the QR codes here. I will just look at paper, uh, and you're welcome to pick them up. Uh, and again, if you want, it's wisconsinacademy.org slash forward slash climate forward, and so you can download them for free. Over the course of this year, we're hoping to get the story out to other organizations and, uh, and people working in the field. Uh, and on February 3rd, I think we're going to have a sellout. So this is your free early uh, invitation. Uh, uh, Steve Carpenter and Chris Guitar and Bill Ingram are going to be talking about how we can use storytelling, the arts, and scenarios to help people understand strategies and solutions around climate change. And that will be February 3rd at Overture Center at the Hemlock Hall register online because if you don't get it all online. So in any event, we're excited to be an organization that can be in a place where we can share these conversations with other leaders and hope that we can engage in the conversation going forward. Um, I will say a few things about our recommendations. Um, <clears throat> there are, are about 45 specific recommendations in the report. And uh, what we did was we realized with the years with the intense effort, we could not put together a comprehensive 500-page tone on what Wisconsin could do. What we could do is put together an initial menu of options. So this is really meant to be places to begin the conversation and explore. And we are hoping that others will take a look at this and say this doesn't go really far enough. 
it's not aggressive enough, and here's a better plan. But we wanted to put something out there to move the conversation forward and hope that you will help us kick the can a little farther down the road.